Over 14% of people in the US in 2021 had a substance abuse disorder. We reached record numbers with overdosing deaths, and these numbers seemingly continue to climb. Substance abuse controls many lives, but it doesn't always have to be that way. One way to understand addiction or substance abuse is by reframing it. There's a concept in the field of psychology that therapists may use to help an addict rethink about how their substance issue or issues are forming. The concept is that the problem is not the problem. We oftentimes look at the addiction as the thing that's the problem. And although that is a serious thing to address, it's not the full picture. There's actually something much deeper here, something that may be actually causing that specific problem as well. So when we think of the problem not being the problem, a lot of the times we need to zoom out and look further back thinking what else could be causing me to act or think or feel in this specific way. As an example, when someone is a cutter, they inflict self-harm through the form of physical pain with cuts onto their skin. They might have all these struggles, this emotional distress, these relationship challenges, and nothing they do seems to be helping. They could also be very emotionally devoid and not really feeling anything at all. And so even by inflicting physical pain on themselves, it's better than feeling nothing at all. No matter what you do, it doesn't seem to help. As soon as you pull the razor out and cut yourself, it's instant relief. The pain is gone. The feelings are gone. The cutting behavior reinforces that this actually leads to something productive and healthy. It fixes the problem and helps put a band-aid on those feelings for now. It works until it doesn't. Struggles grow and the cycle repeats. The endorphins that are released when you experience physical pain from the cutting interact with the same receptor that heroin reacts to. You're literally activating the same part of your brain that turns on when you have heroin in your system. These things are incredibly unbearable sometimes and they're very hard to navigate. So what can actually be done to work through these challenging things? If you actually want to make the change, there's still much greater chances of hope. These vices, addictions, or substance struggles can be unbearable, but there is hope if you genuinely want to change. You have to zoom out and think introspectively to realize that you may be using the razor, the substance, or whatever other vice as a crutch to help you deal with some of the psychological pain that you've previously experienced. Remember that the problem isn't always the problem. It isn't what you think it is. It's potentially deeper than that. You might be focusing on the substance abuse, the addiction or self-harm as a function of some deeper problem. Maybe there was some traumatic event that happened while you were super young, or maybe your parents were extremely toxic and abusive, or maybe you were in a very violent, challenging, disruptive relationship that completely took things by storm in your life. Countless variations of these things can play a huge role in all of this. In order to solve the problem of the substance or vice, you have to understand what the function is of the substance abuse. What is it helping you steer clear of and what are the underlying issues popping up because of that? Understand what you can do to cope with all of this in healthy ways and deal with the substance abuse, self-harm, etc. Healing begins when you step back and recognize that there is a problem. No one can make that change for you. You have to feel it for yourself. You have to want to change for yourself. I've personally known many people who have been down that road and it's been incredibly difficult sometimes because as much as you love the person and you care for them and you just want to be there and do everything, there's only so much you can do. A lot of these people would snap back and relapse, withdraw, they'd go back right to their old behaviors and habits, even when they're surrounded by healthy, happy people, because all it takes is one slip up, one little thing to just get you back on track. So it isn't just a matter of being around happy people or knowing what to do. There also has to be that innate urge, that desire to change, knowing that something is seriously wrong. It doesn't happen overnight, and it's okay if it feels overwhelming at first. Small victories add up, so don't overwhelm your brain and body by thinking, I have to be sober and completely perfect for the rest of my life. 
all you have to do is make the next decision be a good one. And then the next one, and the next one, and the next one. Just win the next hour. Just win the next few hours, your work shift, whatever it may be. All you have to do is win today. And then you can focus on the other stuff later. The more you can be in the present and focus on this now and tackle those small little challenges, the much easier it will be for you to celebrate those small wins and move through this in healthy and more constructive ways. The level of denial around addiction is often a sign of desperation, the desperate need to avoid facing the deeper pain that's fueling the addiction. Once you finally face that pain head on, that's when the healing begins. On the topic of substance abuse and addiction, a movie recently came out called The Substance, and I have a lot of thoughts on it from a psychological perspective. If it's something you're interested in at all, the video is totally free up on my Patreon linked below. It's important to acknowledge the many layers of addiction as well. It's not just one myopic linear thing. There's biological factors, there's neurological factors, there's even physical factors at play that influence all of this stuff. Some people may have damaged their brain's reward systems with substances, making recovery even more difficult. If you're still able to recognize the problem and have a desire to change, your chances of long-term healing are much higher. Emotional trauma can lead to addiction. One deep psychological wound can create a cascade of other issues like substance abuse. By addressing the root cause, you can work toward healing those deeper wounds. A key part of recovery is surrounding yourself with healthy, supportive people, in addition to wanting to make that change. It's also incredibly helpful here to fill your life with passions and things that interest you. It might be hard at first or when you're initially trying to get out of all this, but think of anything that gives you joy in life. There's got to be something interesting or something that you're willing to put more time into. This can help distract you a little bit and keep you busy when you're trying to struggle through some of these things. In addition to all of this, therapy can be a very helpful tool on this journey. I've talked a ton about this on the channel before, where there's all sorts of modalities of therapy. There's all sorts of different therapists out there who can help you with different things. I found incredible support through EMDR, through dealing with traumas, but there's all sorts of different things you can talk about. There's different types of professionals out there. So if this is the route that you're willing to go and that you're interested in, I would absolutely recommend speaking to a licensed professional in person, you'd be amazed at what good sessions with good people can do to change your life. Substance abuse is a complicated issue, but healing is possible. It all starts with understanding the role that addiction plays in your life and taking those first steps toward change. Remember that you don't have to go at this alone and there are countless resources, support systems, people, and more that can help you through all of this. If any of this is helpful or resonates with you, feel free to share it or talk about this with someone you love. Remember the concept of the problem is not the problem. Sometimes we fixate so heavily on the addiction or substance itself that we forget why we even started abusing in the first place. If you found this video helpful, any support for the channel would be greatly appreciated. I wanted to give a huge shout out to my biggest channel supporters, Aaron Frenek, Erica, Carolina, Sunny Sue, and Tony Martinez. I seriously can't thank you guys enough for all the support you've given me and the channel, as well as this community. Thank you guys so much. Remember to take care of yourselves. Remember to take care of those around you. And for all things psychology to help you think, feel, and perform better, stay tuned right here on Psychology of Living.